set up some uh, trial plots to uh, demonstrate some of the things that Eileen just mentioned about improving soil health. The, the end result is we are looking at two major problems out here at Jake's Branch. One is where the soil is very severely compacted. The other site we looked at is a very sandy site. Eileen talked about how sandy soils don't like to hold on to a lot of nutrition and a lot of water. Russ? And so we're looking at ways to try to improve uh, the sandy soils with organic matter additions and to see if it'll grow better grass and it's easier to maintain. The plots that have been most impressive of where we have taken the time to decompact the soils and then add organic matter to the soils, you will we'll be able to see where the grasses are growing so much better where we've taken the time and uh, made the effort to do that. And where we haven't, the, the grass is really struggling and uh, it has thinned out and there's a lot of weeds growing into those plots and the, the turf just isn't forming quite as good as it is where we've uh, improved those soils. Hello, I'm Jennifer Crumans. I'm from up at Montclair State University, way up in North Jersey. And as Dr. Murphy said, he's established some research plots out there where they're doing various levels of tillage or organic amendments to look at um, the health of the soil and then the outcome for the plant population growing above that, the plants living above that. And then my job is to look at, as they were saying, but the biological component, the living component of the soil. I'm very much one of those people that believe soil is alive. And I study all the living things in the soil and how they interact with each other. And they have an extremely important role, as she was stating, in, in keeping the plant alive and healthy so that we can grow strong, healthy plants above. Um, but little things, like she mentioned using cover crops, using things like clover or legumes as cover crops. Well, what you may not know is one of the reasons clover is so special is because it harbors really important microorganisms in its roots. And those microorganisms in the root are what make clover bring nutrients into the soil in a completely natural process, probably one of the most important processes on the planet. So what I do is I go through and I count the microbes and I count all the little soil animals living in the soil and I look at their DNA as well. And what we've been doing, what I've got here in just this little poster, this is just a piece of it. This was work carried out by one of my undergraduate researchers, Elijah, he was a bright kid. And he counted all the nematodes in the treated and untreated plots that Dr. Murphy had established. And what he sees is that if you look at the dark blue bars, in general we see more nematodes, little microscopic worms, in the soil under his treatments, where he's aerated the soil and where he's added that organic matter. And so, from some perspective, little worms in the soil could be bad. Sometimes those worms want to eat the plants, and that, at first glance, isn't such a good thing. But having a big, healthy, diverse population of these little bitty microscopic worms in your soil, in the long run, is actually quite a good thing, because they're turning over those nutrients, they're enriching the organic matter, and most important, they're adding nutrients like nitrogen to the soil through their own eating, through their own habits, through their own lifestyle. And so what we're showing is that when he treats the soil, when he aerates it ever so slightly and when he adds nutrients to it, organic matter, we see this enrichment in the little guys living down there, all the little things that are living down there. And we're also seeing, um, we've been counting the bacteria as well, interestingly, not seeing a lot of differences there. And we've been looking at the, uh, the molecular DNA profiles of the different types of organisms there and uh, those results are just now being analyzed.